Let's welcome in from the BA Coaches Show, our Monday guest to break it all down, make sense of everything that's going on, Ben Adi. Good morning. Good morning. How are you guys doing? We're doing wonderful. How about Hi, yourself? Ben. Um, I, I'm not doing too bad. Uh, Saturday kind of sucked, but I feel I feel fine now. Okay. How'd you get over it? Um, just realized that this team's just not very good. And my expectations were too high. Mm, just like that. Was there is there I, a I certain is there a certain all, drink I, involved? It's either that or sit and ponder about it for the rest of my life. I don't. I really. I kind of just <laughs> got to yeah. get over it. I guess. Yeah, life's too short for that. Um. So there's a lot to unpack in what you just said, and uh, I'm a bartender more than a psychologist. They don't pay the same, I've been told. Uh, but do you think, and we're going to go, we're going to go a couple of different ways here in discussing USC and then what's ahead for the next two. Is you looked at that game on Saturday, and little tweaks on offense where I thought there was more, there was. There was more of a sense of purpose and being in a zone with offensive play calling, but there were times where plays were there that had to be made by players. Did Saturday's game do anything to validate Matt Rule's discussion about we just got to have players make plays? Did it did it uh, further yeah, that? Did it yeah. further validate him, or did you go ah that seems like a that seems like a cop out, coach? Um. Well, I kind of. Felt like it was a cop out, but after seeing the game, um, I kind of feel a little bit more towards his way. Um, in my opinion, I actually thought for the most part the receivers played better. Um, I did Dylan too. Missed a couple open guys, just a little bit. Jamal Banks. Banks had a good game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, he missed Banks. That would have been wide open. I thought Banks had a good game. Um, but yeah, I agree. I think a lot of these is players just got to go out and make plays. Um, I think it was last week or the week before. I didn't love that answer and. To be honest with you, I still don't love that answer. I'm not saying he's wrong. I just don't necessarily love throwing that out there publicly. But mm -hmm. hey, maybe it's a challenge to the guys, and hopefully they can respond to it. But I definitely do think there's something there. Okay, so Ben, I want to go to the the scoring drive that ends with Emmett Johnson on the on the mesh route, gets the touchdown pass. Um, I that drive alone, I think, was one of the better drives we've seen Nebraska have. Probably going all the way back to I don't know, maybe uh, maybe the Colorado game, at least going back to September. Mm -hmm. And we just brought him up. One guy in that drive essentially was just day and night as far as what Jamal Banks did. Had a huge third down reception, but also two, and there might have been another one where he was involved in, but two that I remember, two key blocks on the perimeter. So my question is, and what I think largely was a better night for him in blocking Mm -hmm. Is this what, what, in your opinion, changes? Because they seem like he was in a similar position, one on one battles that he's been in that he just doesn't get to or can't maintain the guy long enough to where that guy's out of the play. What changed? What, in your opinion, is it more of the position they put him in? Is it the plays that they were running? Or was it just the fact that he just <laughs> finally just manned up and said, I'm going to win this one on one battle? In my opinion, one on one perimeter blocking is a huge part of want to and drive and hey i'm gonna beat you up it's one-on-one -on -one. it's you know a little fight here i'm going to you know i'm gonna beat you i'm making it my mission to beat you so although there probably was some little tweaks what i really think and honestly what i kind of hoped happened was that after all these bad games on film i hope that maybe it's a new oc change maybe it is what it is they're able to say look if you can't make these plays you cannot be on the field because, mm -hmm. and I, in my opinion, that's, I mean, that's something that should have been happening all season. Um, just because it's, we're, it's not like we're beating anybody over the top. Sometimes you can forgive some perimeter blocking um, mess ups when it's like, Hey, we got to keep this guy on the field. Just keep the defense guessing. Right. Mm -hmm. We just haven't had that this year, basically out of any receiver. So I think that it was a big mentality change, but maybe it was some sort of schematic thing to me. I kind of agree with you. It seems to be, same similar positions, one on one battles. That's why I tend to think that he just decided to kind of man up and take care of business. And I, I was happy with it. If we get that Jamal Banks, I'll be I'll be good the rest of the way. Yeah. Uh Ben Adi joining us. So let's talk about the quarterback because that's a that's a Dylan's got to make some plays. He's got to make the 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 whether it be a, a pass to Banks. Um I think he looked more comfortable. Um, with the tempo of the offense, the ball coming out quicker, what Nick was alluding to, we had a crossing route. 
When was the last time you saw Nebraska yeah. run a crossing yeah, and route slants. for a for a touchdown? Were slants, Gary, slants. But let me let me ask you, Ben, because Dylan Riola ha- is a discussion because he's he's for Nebraska's sake, he needs to be more of a playmaker. Um, has he not been right since the miss with Lyndon Meyer in the Illinois game? That is a very good. That's a very good point. I hadn't really thought about it like that, but. That probably is the turning point of where you would look at of where things have gone drastically downhill. Um, that is a good point because you look at the overtime of that game and that was completely broken. Um, yeah, he's definitely looked completely far off. I did think, I, I agree with you that he looked more comfortable on Saturday. And that, I can tell I in my opinion, that had a lot to do with the OC change. Um, I felt like for the most part on a lot of those plays, his reads were very easy, and that's just Air Raid 101. Um, Air Raid 101 isn't necessarily just throwing the ball 100 times. It's going to be making life super easy on the quarterback. And I think we saw that with some of the slants route, the mesh route, that, the mesh play that we ran for the touchdown. I think a lot of the reads were good. Where we saw struggles with Dylan still were when some of these longer developing plays where he's going to have to make a read or two mm-hmm. um, that, that are a little bit more difficult of – reading a high safety or whatever, that's kind of where we saw some of the issues of where we were missing open receivers. So I think what's going to be – I'm, I'm struggling to figure out how we figure this out in the next two games because clearly maybe with uh, Dana being in there that it can make a difference. He's only been in there a couple weeks or whatever. But I have a hard time trying to figure out how we magically get this magic back that we had for about the first month of the season until that miss passed. I want to get you. Th- what, oh no, sorry. Go ahead. No, no. Uh, I was just saying it's going to be really important to see. I guess I hate to already be thinking about the off season. I guess, but it's like we got to figure that out because if he's going to be the player that we want and need him to be in the future, we got to be able to see open guys downfield and be a playmaker. And, and we thought, speaking of playmakers, if. Holgerson in a in a couple of weeks being able to get familiar with this personnel and look at the the pros and cons and are they putting guys on the field that need to be there especially in key moments. Gary and I've been talking about it. We talked a little bit about this Saturday on Big Red Overreaction too of the one guy who stood out more so than he has all year because he hasn't quite frankly been used a lot is Jan Aaron Bonner. So when you see the way he's used. What, what first of all, what did you think about just the concepts that they had him involved in and and what you think that overall impact could look like here in the next couple of weeks with a a, a big bodied guy that now has experience has a fullback, a tight end, and a wide receiver? I love the way that uh, we used him on Saturday. That was something that honestly, as I'm watching it unfold, I'm kind of like, why hasn't this yeah, been I, done more I, I'm, the I was season? right there with you, right there with you. <laughs> That's kind of where I'm at is like you know, and I'll admit like, he's not on like my biggest radar of guys. And I really like him. I really love him as a player. I really do. But as I'm seeing some of these concepts on Fulton, getting him the ball, my first thought is like, where has this been the whole season? This is great. Um, so I do expect him to keep getting in the fold. I definitely, I could just, in my opinion from watching that game, I could tell you right away, Dana really likes what he sees there. Dana Holgerson. Yeah see something there in practice or on film or whatever, and he really likes him. Uh, because to get him from basically be- very little involvement to getting him the ball in the ways that we did, I definitely think that Dana very much likes him and wants to get him the ball. And something that I think that will be a little bit of a change from Dana Holgerson from Satterfield and something that I very much believe in is sometimes it's not about you know all these different concepts you can do. It's like, hey, we need to get our best players the ball. And that's something, and we can be creative on how we get those players the ball, but it's about the Jimmys and Joes, not the X's and O's sometimes. And that's what I think that uh, we're going to see a lot more is the guys that Dana likes. We're going to find creative ways to get them the ball. What were your thoughts on the clock management on the last oh, drive? <laughs> um, you just got to do well, there. <laughs> <sighs> okay. I, you guys know, I've said this a lot on the, I, You guys know, you guys can back me up. I'm a huge Matt Rule fan. I, I very much love the guy. I have to say, the clock management and timeout management this year has just absolutely baffled me. It, I, don't, 
I see references. Oh, you know, the book says we need to do this. I would love to see this book that gets referenced sometimes <laughs> just because True. everything that I've seen seem to learn throughout my young coaching career. I'm a lot younger than Matt Rule, but it's, I've never learned a lot of these things. Mm. And I think Saturday had a couple great examples of that, of me just being baffled and not quite, I just don't quite understand it sometimes. Um, just seems very disorganized at times. Nothing upsets me more than just wasted timeouts. That's just something that bothers me at any level of football, like even mm. high school level football. I, I get angry at wasted timeout. So I feel like we do that. Um, the whole punt, fake punt, that would seem very disorganized to me. I, 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 I know he answered it in the way that, you know, he probably, I don't know. I still think it was a very weird disorganized way. And the biggest thing that I've kind of thought about through the last, you know, I guess couple of days since the game is I've thought like, have we walked away from a game in the Matt rule era and been like, you know, our coaching staff won us that game. I, I say no. It's always, yeah. been, in my opinion, it's always been the opposite of like, hey, there's been these coaching decisions that probably yeah. lost us that game, and that sucks. Because, like I said, you guys know I'm a huge Matt Rule fan, but the timeout and clock management absolutely baffles me. The first half situation with the whole runoff thing, I still think that was weird. Um, I think that if you're, because I see the situation of people saying like, oh, here, trying to set up a block, trying to set up to block the kick. My counter to that would be is if you block the punt and you don't score on that, don't you still want time to go score again? Yeah. That's just my kind of, I guess, yeah. pushback to that. But it seems like overall this year and last year, the clock management has just been, I can't even say it, it's just been baffling to me. I just don't understand it. Ben, defensively, and, and we obviously got to have that conversation too, very, very reminiscent, in my opinion, of, almost a combination of the Maryland and Wisconsin game of a year ago where Nebraska couldn't get off the field. You saw some moments where they were able to either get a turnover, do some good things, but the the numbers and then the the third down conversions in, in key moments still loomed large in this one. Gary and I were talking about it. It was one, essentially one play, basically a counter play that USC yeah. could run over and over and over and over again. You're watching that. You're seeing where the defense is, is and where they unfortunately aren't in trying to fit that. What is that something that we've seen a lot? Or was this USC being able to exploit that just because they had a little bit better of a running back and some guys up front that were able to push some guys out? I feel that this defense right now is very boom or bust, as in they're going to get a turnover, they're going to end up with a big stack or. You know, they're going to end up with a three and out, or they're going to not be able to get off the field and give up a touchdown. Um, I I was not happy at all with the way that USC was able to just continuously just run the ball and gash us with basically, like you said, the same play. Mm -hmm. um, but honestly, I also feel like schematically, we didn't do a great job helping ourselves either. And Tony White is, I think, a really good defensive coach. But I say this with, as much respect in the world. Don't take this as a slight toward anybody. But what the heck is Malcolm Hartzog doing covering a 6'5 receiver? Yeah, they, you they, know what I mean? Like, they, they haven't, I'm not, I'm not, they haven't not done a good job a jerk, of hiding but, him all year. They can't leave him on, the, yeah. on, on an island. Right. Yes, why he's on the outside on an island, like you said, is baffling to me. So I don't think we're helping ourselves at all. Um, and yeah, it's just... So after the, well, the Rutgers game, I, you know, was very praiseful of the defensive staff on how it, they seem to be, you know, that game was one in the film study. They adjusted well. They had a great game plan. I think the last month has been kind of the opposite. Outside of, I guess, Ohio State. Um, uh, they played well against Ohio State. They, you know, didn't get off the field, but hey, if you're going to hold Ohio State to what we held them to, then that's going to be fine. But I think the other three games in this losing streak here have just kind of been, uh, yeah, it's just not been very good defensively. We just can't get off the field. And I don't know if that's something that's going on during the week because it seems like teams are able to come out right away and move the ball. Um, I know we stopped USC a couple times, but in the first half, they kind of moved the ball a bit. And then the teams are adjusting very well to us yeah. throughout the last few weeks. And I know that teams are showing new wrinkles because of a bye week. But it's like, hey, man, that's kind of kind of your job as coaches to adjust, you know. So I've not been thrilled with the defensive effort. I. Obviously, the offense is probably a huge 
maybe a bigger issue because of how we're not able to score a ton of points. But I think the defense is not quite the unit that we thought they were. Is that because they changed defenses in the offseason? More quarters coverage? I, I think so. Less attacking? Um, I, 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 very, I, I think so. That's something that I'm, I, I can't remember if I've ever mentioned it on here. I'm sure I've probably mentioned it in the passing. I've not been a fan of that. Um, it, at times this year, it seemed to work good that we ran a lot more quarters in cover two. But in my opinion, like that's not that's not what got us, you know, a great unit last year. And I understand maybe the philosophy of wanting to change it, but also uh, I don't know. I'm very interested to see that if we don't make the DB coaching change, if that yeah. still happens. And the reason I say that is because when you look at what John Butler came from, he came from a lot of cover two quarters coverage, right? That's just a lot of the defenses that he's ran. So I wonder. I just don't. I wonder when the plan was to switch to that, if that makes sense. Because mm-hmm. a, a big problem that we're having in the system right now is there seems to be a very lack of communication in the defensive backs, which is how you end up with wide open receivers. Um, seems like there was one or two plays in particular that it seemed like everyone was running zone except for one or two guys that were covered up on their man. So um, the, the lack of communication, I think, is setting up these big receivers, but I, to answer your question, I do not love the change that we made, and I do wonder when that decision was made to change. Quarterback situation, not situation, but quarterback regression from from Dylan, it's it's been evident, and we know having a bit of a, a back thing also doesn't help the process, but as you know, Ben, there is, and it started on Saturday, hell, it started probably at some point during the game, that there is more of a call to see more Heinrich Harburg. What what do you what do you feel the volume? If 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 you even feel there's a volume at all of Heinrich Harburg, what do you think that should or could look like to benefit this offense? I have been under the opinion for a few weeks now, mostly from the beginning of the season, of how I thought he could be used. I'm not saying that Harburg should be starting. What I am saying is I think he should be in there. 15 to 20 plays a game, getting a good chunk of play, not like in a row, but like, you know, mix them in there three or four plays here, you know, whatever of it gives a different element to the offense. It, if there is a little bit of a hurt from Dylan, it saves him some hits maybe. And it just, he is to me, Harburg is such a, he's not like explosive game breaking, but he's such a dynamic player and changes the offense a bit that defense has to at least key in on him somewhat, right? I think that's why we've seen some of the things of him just being in the game, even if he's just kind of a decoy. I would love to see him. I mean, I can't figure out why he comes in the game. We gain, like, I don't know, what 12 yards or 15 yards, whatever it was, and then he's just gone again. You know, like, yeah. to me, he could just be such a dynamic kind of change up there to keep defenses on their toes, just adding elements to his game that we don't, see from Dylan and that's just the type of player he is and I have seen a lot more sentiment of get him to start let him play I'm not quite sure if I'm there maybe I maybe I'll look back at the end of the season and say maybe I don't know I think that just depends on how the last two games go I guess but I definitely am under the opinion he should be playing a lot more than what he is I think what frustrates me is we've talked about it on here before about how the words that are said at press conferences don't always match the play on the field is Matt Rule has also said he wants to see him on the field yep. more. Yep. And it's not happening, so that's my frustration a little yep. bit. Ben, as always, we appreciate the insight. Have a uh, great week uh, breaking down USC and ahead of uh, Super Bowl II on uh, Saturday against Wisconsin. Yes, you guys as well. I will look forward to speaking to you guys next week, and Bam. hopefully for the first time in over a month, we're happy. Bam. I hope so. Oh. I hope so. Thanks, Ben.